Hello everyone. Welcome to Nokri Learning. My name is Kanika Garg and my specialization is machine learning, deep learning and data science. Today we are going to discuss about a deep learning algorithm that helped in many areas like natural language processing, forecasting, etc. We are going to talk about uh, recurrent neural network. In our previous discussions, we have talked about uh, convolutional neural networks. If you have missed the session, you can always go back to Nokri Learning and watch them again. So uh, these are the topics that we are going to cover today. Uh, introduction to uh, RNN, then why we use RNN, how it works and its various applications. So before moving to the RNN, uh, let's discuss a little bit about uh, convolutional neural networks. So CNNs uh, generally, you know, don't perform well uh, when the input is interdependent in a sequential pattern. CNNs do not have any sort of memory or uh, way of storing the correlations or the relations between the previous input to the next input. So all the inputs are self-dependent that we consider in CNN. So CNN takes input and produce outputs based on the trained model. So if I run say a thousand different inputs, none of them would be favored or say biased by the previous output. But uh, imagine a scenario like a sentence uh, generation or maybe a text translation, all the words generated are dependent on words generated before them. So in such scenarios, CNNs could never be favored. So we need to have some, you know, bias or say correlations based on our previous output. This is where uh, RNNs shine. RNNs, you know, have in them a sense of say memory about what happened earlier in the sequence of the data. That means they can store that relation of the current words from with the previous words. This helps the system gain context. So they are the first of their, you know, uh, state of the uh, state of the art kind of algorithms that can uh, memorize or have context of the previous inputs in the memory when a huge uh, set of sequential data is available to us. I'm using sequence or sequential data again and again. So let's talk about what exactly uh, sequential data is. See, we have various kinds of data uh, like uh, time series, uh, speech data, text data, financial data, audio, video. These are all kind of data. So these are the ones that are categorized under sequential data because they are ordered data in which interrelated factors follow each other. Uh, recurrent neural networks, they, they can gain more in-depth insight into a sequence and its context from such data sets to derive significant meaning and arrive at an accurate prediction as per the targeted problem at hand. So uh, that is why we are more focused on uh, recurrent neural networks whenever we have a sequence of data or a stream of data that can be finite or that can be infinite. So what exactly... Uh, recurrent neural networks are, these are the kind of uh, neural networks only where the output from the previous step or uh, previous iteration is fed to the current iteration as an input. In uh, As we know that in the traditional neural networks, all the inputs and outputs are independent of each other. But in cases like when it is required to predict the next word, like we have discussed before in the language generation, uh, the previous words are required and hence there is a need to remember those previous previous words. That means the outputs from the previous layers are dependent in the current layers. Thus, RNN came into existence which solved this issue with the help of a hidden layer. The main and the most important feature of RNN is the hidden state which remembers some information about the sequence. As you can see in the diagram itself here in between uh, out, input and output, we have a state or say the hidden um, layers where there is a loop over itself. That means they are feeding the information to itself from the previous uh, input to the current state. This is exactly how it looks like. So RNN, uh, they have a memory which remembers uh, all the information about what has been calculated. It uses uh, the same parameters for input as it performs the same task on all the inputs or hidden layers to produce the output. This reduces basically the complexity of the parameters, unlike in the other uh, neural networks where we have so many biases and weights to remember. As we can see here in the diagram, the uh, nodes in the different layers of the neural networks are compressed to uh, form a single layer of recurrent neural network. Here, a, B, C are the parameters of the networks here and H represents the hidden layer. 
the output at any given time is fetched back to the network to improve the output. That is why there is a loop over hidden layer. So now you can see that uh, why we require neural networks. So we have so certain issues that we face with the uh, forward uh, neural feed forward neural networks so uh, the issues were like they cannot handle the sequential data because they do not have the memory to store any previous step and they can only consider the current input also it cannot of course mem memorize the previous um, uh, input so the solution to these issues is rnn and rnn can handle sequential data they can uh, accepting the accept the current input data as well as the previous uh, received input also, they can memorize previous inputs due to their internal memory. Now, the important question is how RNN works. Now, let's understand this with using this uh, simple example. Now, suppose there is a deeper network here with one input layer, uh, three hidden layers, and one output layer. Then, like another uh, other neural networks, each hidden layer will have its own set of parameters like weights and biases. Say uh, hidden layer one has the weights and biases W1, B1. Similarly for uh, hidden layer two and three. This means that each of these layers are independent of each other and they do not memorize the previous outputs. Now what exactly RNN will do? Uh, as you can see on the diagram, RNN converts the independent activations into dependent activations by uh, say providing some weights and biases to all the layers, thus reducing the complexity of increasing parameters and uh, memorizing each previous outputs by giving each output as input to the next hidden layer. As you can see here also, uh, in the middle layer, HT is getting input from HT minus one, whereas HT is again an input to HT plus one. Hence, these layers can be joined together uh, such that the weights and bias of all the hidden layers is the same into a single recurrent layer. Now, here, um, as you can see that uh, the input layer X takes in the uh, input to neural network and processes it and passes it into the middle layer. The middle layer H can consist of multiple hidden layers, uh, which each with its own activation functions and weights and biases. So uh, if we have a neural network where the various parameters of different hidden layers are not affected by the previous layers, the neural network does not have the memory, then you can use a recurrent neural network. So it will standardize the various uh, activation functions and weights and biases so that each hidden layer has the same parameters. Then instead of creating multiple hidden layers, uh, it will create one loop over it as many as times as it requires to refine our result. Now uh, comes how the training is done through RNN. The very first step is that a single time step of the input is provided to the network. And what exactly time step is? Time steps are nothing but the ticks of the time. It is how long in time each of your sample is take, uh, is going to take. For example, a sample can contain 128 time steps or uh, we say each uh, where each uh, time step could be a 30th of a second for uh, say audio processing or any signal processing. So it is exactly uh, nothing but how long in time each sample is. Then we calculate its current state and uh, pass it on to the next state. The current state becomes, of course, a lesser state for the next time step. So each enrolled, unrolled uh, uh, recurrent neural network unit has a hidden state. So the current time steps hidden state is calculated using information of the previous time steps hidden state and the current input. This process uh, helps to retain information on uh, what the model saw in the previous time step when processing the current time steps information. This is how it remembers things. So uh, then we can uh, go as many time steps according to the problem as we want and join the information from all the previous states together. Once all the time steps are completed, uh, the final state is uh, finally used to calculate the output. And then we match this output with the 
actual output. So whenever uh, there is a difference between the actual and the calculated output, there uh, the error is generated and it is feed back to the propagated back to the network so that we can adjust update our weights and biases according to the error we got. This is how the learning or uh, the training through RNN is completed. Now moving on to the advantages of a recurrent neural network. So uh, and a recurrent neural uh, network remembers each and every piece of information through time. So it is useful in uh, time series predictions because of the feature to remember previous inputs as well. This is called also called as a long short term memory. It is actually possible for us to use them to uh, uh, together with the convolutional uh, neural networks also because uh, this can be especially helpful when the input has to be classified uh, as say visually complex with temporal characteristics. The These kind of structures are called as the hybrid structures and uh, they can be used for applications like uh, gesture recognition, video scene labeling, video identification, or uh, maybe DNA sequencing, etc. Uh, but of course, whenever there are advantages, there are certain disadvantages associated with them also. It has two major disadvantages. Uh, one uh, is gradi uh, gradient vanishing and uh, exploding problems. So let's talk about the vanishing gradient problem first. Recurrent neural networks enable you to model, uh, say, time-dependent and sequential data problems, such as um, stock market prediction, machine translation, speed generation. However, sometimes RNN is hard to train because of the gradient problem. It suffers from the vanishing gradients. That means the gradients carry information used in the RNN. And when the gradient becomes too small, the parameters uh, updates become insignificant. This makes the learning of the long data sequences difficult. Similarly, it has another problem uh, called as the exploding gradient problem. So while training a neural network, if the slope tends to grow exponentially instead of decaying, uh, it is called as the exploding gradient. That means it is increasing at a very higher amount. This problem arises when large error gradients accumulate and resulting in a very large updates to the neural network models, uh, model weights uh, during the training process. So uh, long training time, poor performance and bad accuracy are basically the major issues in gradient problems. The another disadvantage it has is uh, training an RNN is, of course, a difficult task and it takes too much time. And if somehow uh, we are using ReLU and 10H as an activation function, it is sometimes difficult to process the long sequences of the data at once. But uh, we can encounter the problems like gradient vanishing and exploding, and we can uh, use some methods to slow them down. Now let's uh, talk about some of the major applications that RNN has. Uh, the major one is uh, image captioning. As you can see in the diagram, there is, you can see in the image, there is a dog who tries to catch a ball. So it is automatically captioning the image, stating a dog catching a ball in midair. So RNNs are basically used to caption an image by analyzing the activities uh, present in the image at that time. The next uh, application it has is in uh, natural language processing because we already know that natural language is a sequence of the bytes that can be pro processed in a particular sequence only. So text mining and sentiment analysis can be carried out using RNN. And if you can see here in the example, uh, it's an example of the sentiment classification. When it rains, look for rainbows. When it's dark, look for stars. So that means it has a positive sentiment and this is done by RNN. Then another translate, uh, another application is the machine translation where uh, given an input in one language, RNNs can be used to uh, translate the input into different languages as output. So if you can see here, uh, it's giving command to the mobile and the machine translation is here. The person is speaking in English and it is getting translated into Chinese uh, Italian, French, German, Spanish, and languages. And we have seen this thing in actual environment and we can do it by our own. We can just see this example. Then we have uh, speech recognition. Uh, these voice-based commands and 
interpreting the meaning of the commands to produce an accurate output have been possible with the help of algorithms of RNN. Then the final and the one of the most important application we have is time series prediction, where it helps in uh, predicting stock market and uh, any time series related problem in a particular, if we want to, you know, see the prices of uh, certain things in a particular month, these kind of problems can be solved using RNN. Uh, these are the some of the courses uh, that I recommend you to study further for uh, recurrent neural networks. These uh, are majorly provided by Udemy and the course era. The links are provided here. So if you want to anytime deep dive into um, the RNNs, you can just go through these courses. And these courses are available on the learning uh, Nokri learning platform itself. So uh, finally, thank you for uh, being with me. I hope you like this video. Please share and subscribe Nokri Learning for more such content. Thank you.